How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top things to look out for for new builders when building your first PC. There are some things when building a PC that you don't really know or feel or recognize when you haven't actually done it yourself. So reading all the documents and looking at videos, it's easy enough to see how to build the PC, but once you get in there, there are a few things we wanna go over to make sure you are all set to go. So first we're gonna talk about building as much of the PC outside your case as you can. So this will include the motherboard, CPU, RAM, and if possible, the heatsink for your CPU as well. If you build inside the case, things can just get a little cramped and harder to see. So building as much as you can outside the case first will make your life a ton easier when you're going to build it inside the case. The second biggest concern comes with installing and working with the motherboard in your case. So when you first go to install the motherboard, a lot of people get really freaky about the standoffs and where they go and how to position them. And the truth is, yes, it's a metal standoff. Yes, it might be a metal case, but the standoffs are placed on the motherboard in points that they know it's okay to make contact. And that is the whole purpose of having the standoff so that other parts of your motherboard aren't touching the bottom of your case. So you don't have to worry about accidentally touching the case to the standoff or is the standoff supposed to be there without the washer, with the washer? It really doesn't matter in the end because those points are meant to be touching the metal of the standoff to the metal of the case and you're not going to mess up your system at all. Another thing with the motherboard is when you're installing your CPU cooler. So there's a few things to look out for when you're installing your CPU cooler. Now, whether this is an AIO water cooler or just a simple air cooler that came with your CPU like this one, you're always gonna have to apply some kind of thermal paste. Now, sometimes this can be applied for you on the bottom of the cooler, but this is not always the case. If you've already purchased thermal paste outside of the cooler, that's totally fine. You're welcome to use that one or the one that came pre-applied both will work just fine. Just make sure you wipe off the pre-applied one fully before you put on your own. And when actually applying the thermal paste to the cooler, it's okay if you mess up. You can always just wipe off the thermal paste with some isopropyl alcohol. I'd recommend at least 70% uh, alcohol content in it because it dries up really quickly and it's non-conductive. If you do mess up and you need to wipe off the thermal paste onto your cooler or your CPU, I'd recommend using a coffee filter actually, because if you use a regular paper towel, you're gonna leave little bits of the paper towel everywhere around there. But if you use a coffee filter, there is nothing because obviously no one wants to drink coffee with a bunch of little flakes of their paper filter in there. It is a filter, so it's meant to actually stay together. One thing you wanna make sure to do is when you're applying the thermal paste and then you have to install the CPU cooler, if you are moving it around a lot and picking it up and putting it back down and picking it up and putting it down, you might wanna make sure that you still have a good amount of thermal paste on there to where when you finally do get it seated correctly, you don't have any thermal issues. If this is your very first time building, I'd actually recommend go ahead and put it on dry without any thermal paste and then see how tight the fit is just so you get a feel of how much pressure you need to put on. And then you can take it back off and do it with the thermal paste to make sure it's all smooth. Now the biggest thing in my opinion is when you're installing the cooler itself and the amount of force sometimes it takes to actually get these clips to snap in place. When I was first building my computer and even to this day, some of these coolers just take so much force to get on that you feel like you're gonna rip your board in half. Now these boards do have some flex in them, so it's okay if it bends a little bit while you're installing it. Obviously use discretion, but the clips are meant to be super snug, so it is okay if you're applying a little more force than you probably anticipated. While we're on the subject of the motherboard bending, when you install your RAM, this can also happen occasionally. Your standoffs are far enough apart to where when you're pressing in your RAM modules, you will get a little flex in the motherboard down, and that is totally normal. Just make sure you're not pressing the RAM sticks in too hard to where you haven't aligned them correctly and you're actually damaging them. That'll be the biggest key when you're installing RAM is just to make sure the notches are aligned, get one side in first and align it correctly, and then you can press the full stick in. And lastly here, this is gonna come from actually a lot of comments on my video on how to install the front panel connectors. The biggest thing here I would say, especially when I was first building it, was I was nervous I was gonna plug them in incorrectly. And a lot of comments in the video asked about that, like, how is, why is it not working? Is it incorrectly? Should I not have done that? Am I damaging the board? These are very, very low voltage, low power connectors. So if you really want to go ahead and just plug them in and if it works, it works. And if it works, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. They're just LED lights and buttons. So if you plug in the power connector and you don't know which is positive and which is the negative lead and the power button doesn't work, swap them. And then if it works, you're good to go. But you really can't damage your motherboard by mixing these up in the first place. All that's going to happen is the button or the LED just isn't going to work. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope these tips kind of helped you if you're a new builder, kind of get you more confidence to build your system and kind of help you through any hurdles that you might come across on the way. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. And if you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe for more like this. And if you'd like to support the channel even more, please consider going to Patreon or just checking out the links in the description. So if you do like my PC setup or anything like that, go check them out there. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.